The Old Testament reading for the fourth Sunday in Advent is from Micah chapter 5. But you, O Bethlehem Ephrathah, who are too little to be among the clans of Judah, from you shall come forth for me one who is to be ruler in Israel, whose origin is from of old, from ancient days. Therefore he shall give them up until the time when she who is in labor has given birth. Then the rest of his brothers shall return to the people of Israel, and he shall stand and shepherd his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God, and they shall dwell secure. For now he shall be great to the ends of the earth, and he shall be their peace. O Lord, have mercy on us. The epistle is from Hebrews chapter 10. When Christ came into the world, he said, Sacrifices and offerings you have not desired, but a body have you prepared for me. In burnt offerings and sin offerings you have taken no pleasure. Then I said, Behold, I have come to do your will, O God, as it is written of me in the scroll of the book. When he said above, You have neither desired nor taken pleasure in sacrifices and offerings and burnt offerings and sin offerings, these are offered according to the law. Then he added, Behold, I have come to do your will. He abolishes the first in order to establish the second. And by that will we have been sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. O Lord, have mercy on us. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the first chapter. In those days, Mary arose and went with haste into the hill country to a town in Judah. And she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. And when Elizabeth heard the greeting of Mary, the baby leaped in her womb. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. And she exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. Why is this granted to me that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For behold, when the sound of your greeting came to my ears, the baby in my womb leaped for joy, and blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her from the Lord. O Lord, have mercy on us. Please be seated. Glory to God is from the gospel reading. One verse reads, Blessed is she who has believed that what the Lord said to her will be accomplished. So far the text, please be seated. Dear saints who are waiting for Christmas to come, the bond between women and the bond between men are different. When women get together, they talk and they talk and they talk, and there's rarely a moment of silence. When men get together, yes, they talk and they share stories, but men tend to bond through that shared experiences of hunting and fishing, destroying things, creating things, fixing things, and there may be spans of silence. Men don't necessarily need to fill all the time of span with conversation. It has been said that for every 10,000 words that women use, men only use 1,000 words, to which women might respond with, that's because men don't know much. Well, now imagine a marriage in which the husband isn't a conversationalist and the wife is just jabbering away, trying to generate some conversation with her husband, but all she gets out of him is one-word responses. Uh-huh, yes, maybe, okay, whatever. In our gospel reading, Elizabeth, has a husband who hasn't spoken to her in at least six months. Remember the angel Gabriel came to uh, Zechariah and said, 
that his wife Elizabeth was going to have a baby, and Zechariah doubted the words of the angel. So Zechariah was made speechless until the time of the birth of his son John. So it came to pass in those days that Mary went to see her relative, the home of Zechariah and Elizabeth. St. Luke, the gospel writer, reveals a wonderful scene. When Mary greeted Elizabeth, the women were ecstatic for Elizabeth, maybe someone to talk to. Oh, but there's more. Women greeting women, women hugging each other, women expressing joy with excitement, and excitement is filled with joys of tears. Pregnant women touching bellies, pregnant women talking about babies, pregnant women talking and talking with raised voices, unable to get a word in edgewise. And what is Zechariah doing? St. Luke doesn't say, but maybe speechless Zechariah is waving his arms and trying to motion them to sit down and calm down, afraid that these women are going to stroke out on him. Why all this excitement and joy? Surely more than for Elizabeth and Mary, thinking finally we have someone to talk to, both women and neither womb should have had such joy. Elizabeth was old and was barren. She was said to be old and beyond the years of having children. Mary was a virgin betrothed to Joseph. Mary's womb, by natural reproductive means, should not have had a child, really could not have had a child. So it shouldn't surprise you and me that she would ask of the angel Gabriel, how can this be? I don't know a man. But here they stand embracing each other, hugging each other, shedding tears of joy, speaking excessively, maybe even jumping up and down just a little bit because they were blessed by God. Elizabeth was blessed by God because God showed favor to her and took away her disgrace and shame among the people for being barren. And for Mary was blessed by God because God through her was doing a new thing. God through her was fulfilling his promise to bring salvation to the world. Blessed by God, we humbly rejoice because we don't deserve God's grace and favor. Being blessed by God is the result of an act of divine grace which God gives to human beings because we are sinful from birth and dead toward God. And yet, what does God do? God creates something new out of nothing. And it began with Mother Eve. After Eve fell into sin, all that her womb could produce were children barren to God, sinful children, hell-bent children, children destined to die. But God would show favor to Eve and promise that from her offspring, he would create something new. From Eve's offspring, God would bring forth the Holy One who would crush the serpent's head and reverse the effects of sin. Eve believed the promise and waited for that day, and God called Eve the mother of the living. Elizabeth and Mary were descendants from another mother, a barren mother, Sarah, who laughed at God when she overheard the angel tell Abraham, her husband, that she was going to have a child, a son. Yet God blessed Sarah and brought out of nothing from a barren womb the son of promise, Isaac. Isaac married Rebekah, and she was barren. Bought out of a barren womb, God blessed it, and God created something new, a womb giving birth to twins, Jacob and Esau. God fulfilled his promise that through the seed of Abraham and Isaac, all nations would be blessed. Jacob married Rachel, and her womb was also barren, but God opened Rachel's womb, and she gave birth to Joseph and Benjamin, and through their seed, as well as from King David's offspring, God preserved his promise of a Savior, a Messiah from the lineage of David, who would sit on the throne of David forever. He would make all things new. St. Luke records the beginning of the fulfillment. From a virgin comes the Christ. From the barren womb of Elizabeth comes the greatest prophet. All out of nothing, 
all out of what is impossible because with God, nothing's impossible. Oh, that baby in Mary's womb was more than just a manly child who was created at the moment of conception. The baby in Mary's womb is the second person of the Godhead, God the Son, who's equal to God, who was there at the beginning of the world, creating with the Father and the Spirit, and who's the same today, yesterday, tomorrow, and every day. By the overshadowing and the power of the Holy Spirit, the invisible, living, eternal Son of God took on human flesh in Mary's body. The Holy Spirit made his body and blood holy in Mary's womb. And God was creating newness for us. Jesus, in his holy incarnation and birth, would make our unclean conception and corrupt birth holy. So when Mary greeted Elizabeth, John in the womb of Elizabeth, jumped for joy and leaped for joy in the presence of Jesus in Mary's womb. St. Luke mentions it twice that John leaps for joy in the presence of Jesus. All of baby John's joy, all of Elizabeth and Mary's joy and conversation, all their leaping was a direct result of God fulfilling his promise through them and in their presence was Jesus. Mary, Elizabeth, and baby John in the womb, filled with the Holy Spirit, rejoiced in what Jesus would do, make all things new. From the fruit of Mary's womb, Jesus was born and grew and lived and proved by the authority of his word what his life, death, and resurrection would mean. What happened in Jesus' presence? The blind see, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised. The good news is preached to everyone. To the dead little girl, Tabitha, Jesus said, Arise, and out of nothing, out of deadness, Tabitha became alive and lived. To dead Lazarus, Jesus said, Come out, and Lazarus came out of the grave, alive, wearing still his death burial clothes. In the name of Jesus, Spoken by Peter, the lame man in the temple was told to stand up. And when he stood up, he began walking and leaping and praising God. God was making all things new, restoring dead creation, restoring corrupt, destined for death, human flesh to life, to eternal life through Jesus' death and resurrection. This is how Mary and Elizabeth, the baby, John the Baptist, you and me, and the whole world are blessed by God. And what's our response? We humbly rejoice. We humbly rejoice because we don't deserve such favor from God. Yet look what God did. From heaven above to earth I come to bring good news to every home. Glad tidings of great joy I bring, whereof I now will say and sing. And our response? Welcome to earth, thou noble guest, through whom this sinful world is blessed. Thou came to share our misery. What thanks shall I return to thee? My heart for very joy doth leap. My lips no more can silence keep. I too must sing with joyful tongue that sweetest cradle song. Glory to God in the highest, who unto us a son is given, while angels sing with highest mirth, a glad new year to all the earth. A glad new year to all the earth? God is pointing you to the glad new recreated sinless years in store for all believers in Christ. Right now, Christmas and the holiday season brings much depression and sadness because we realize how messed up our families are. We see how bitterness, greed, jealousy, conflict and disputes, and impatience has separated families. Or we may try and pull all the families together to manufacture a good Christmas around the Christmas tree with presents, but oftentimes it's met with someone refusing to come, or everyone's walking on eggshells just trying to keep the peace to get through Christmas. We may close our eyes and put on some Christmas music to kind of get some soothing music going and 
think of our childhood Christmas memories when everything back then seemed perfect. But as soon as we open our eyes, we see the barrenness of love grown cold. So we meet with his side of the family, and then we meet with her side of the family, even meet with the ex's side of the family. But meet and greet each other anyway in your living rooms around the Christmas tree and open your gifts and laugh and talk and leap for joy and eat and drink and enjoy the loud sounds and see the bows and the wrapping paper go flying across the room. For God in Christ has unwrapped the deadness of sin, slavery, and death. For through the fruit of Mary's womb came life and peace and joy in our new creation. All because of Jesus, we will rise from that dead, barren grave and leap for joy in his presence, the crucified, risen lamb. There in the presence, we'll be singing loud conversation, tears of joy, leaping and gladness, for you will see your once barren world, your once barren family, once stained by perpetual sin, transformed, new, and recreated, and it will be a glad new year, a glad eternal year in the presence of Jesus. Blessed by God? Well, you know you are. Therefore, we humbly rejoice. Amen. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, keep your hearts and mind in Christ, the life everlasting. Amen. Please remain seated, and we sing. Glory to God is from the gospel reading. One verse reads, Blessed is she who has believed that what the Lord said to her will be accomplished. So far the text, please be seated. Dear saints who are waiting for Christmas to come, the bond between women and the bond between men are different. When women get together, they talk and they talk and they talk, and there's rarely a moment of silence. When men get together, yes, they talk and they share stories, but men tend to bond through that shared experiences of hunting and fishing, destroying things, creating things, fixing things, and there may be spans of silence. Men don't necessarily need to fill all the time of span with conversation. It has been said that for every 10,000 words that women use, men only use 1,000 words, to which women might respond with, that's because men don't know much. Well, now imagine a marriage in which the husband isn't a conversationalist and the wife is just jabbering away, trying to generate some conversation with her husband, but all she gets out of him is one-word responses. Uh-huh, yes, maybe, okay, whatever. In our gospel reading, Elizabeth has a husband who hasn't spoken to her in at least six months. Remember the angel Gabriel came to uh, Zechariah and said that his wife Elizabeth was going to have a baby, and Zechariah doubted the words of the angel. So Zechariah was made speechless until the time of the birth of his son John. So it came to pass in those days that Mary went to see her relative, the home of Zechariah and Elizabeth. St. Luke, the gospel writer, reveals a wonderful scene. When Mary greeted Elizabeth, the women were ecstatic. For Elizabeth, maybe someone to talk to. Oh, but there's more. Women greeting women. Women hugging each other. Women expressing joy with excitement, and excitement is filled with joys of tears. Pregnant women touching bellies. Pregnant women talking about babies. Pregnant women talking and talking with raised voices, unable to get a word in edgewise. And what is Zechariah doing? St. Luke doesn't say, but maybe speechless Zechariah is waving his arms and trying to motion them to sit down and calm down, afraid that these women are going to stroke out on him. Why all this excitement and joy? Surely more than for Elizabeth and Mary, thinking finally we have someone to talk to, both women and neither womb 
should have had such joy. Elizabeth was old and was barren. She was said to be old.